relation to the technology is going to be special for you. What features you use, how you use it, when you use it, is tailored to your learning needs. So, yeah. um, my name is Ellen, that's Tom over there. Hi. <coughs> We're mostly around here all the time, Monday through Thursday. This is a computer lab that supports students with disabilities who are taking academic classes. So in terms of technology, we're here for you. Right. Let us begin. Welcome to the Santa Monica College High Tech Training Center, period. I am glad you are here today to see how technology might make a difference in your life, period. This is voice recognition technology, and as you can see, what I spoke ended up on the screen. Have any of you experienced this technology before? Oh, yes, you, you did, right? Last time. Yeah, right. <laughs> and what was your experience with it? Um, somebody I worked with had it, so it was easy for her to take notes. Yeah. Okay, this is great. And was there any particular reason why she chose that technology? Oh, it was more efficient for her. Okay, did she have any issues with her hands? Mm -hmm. No. It was used for her to like wrap Just more efficient, yeah. Okay. So you know, that happens sometimes. The technology developed for people who have a disability, like this was developed for people who had difficulty using their hands, is now gone mainstream. And a lot of people use it. Because it just makes them get out text faster. Another group of people that's extremely really been helpful for. Can you see the screen? Yes. Okay. Is people who have significant spelling problems. One of you is going. <laughs> because you know that if your spelling problems are significant enough, by the time you type or write a word, you've used so much energy, at least getting close to the correct spelling, that what happens to your flow of ideas? You go out. It's gone, right? Yeah. So I want those of you who are faced with this challenge to seriously consider trying out this technology. It doesn't... Yeah, go ahead. Is it wind? I mean... Where? Power? I mean, from... Ex from this is, office, right? We've got two things going on here. We've got Dragon Naturally Speaking, voice recognition software. I am using voice recognition technology period. I am also using Microsoft Word, period. Microsoft Word is irrelevant, period. I could use the voice recognition technology with other word processing programs, period. Okay, so they're not inextricably linked. We just happen to use Microsoft Word. Um, there is voice recognition software that comes with Windows 7. And, yeah. When you speak, does it say all the commas and everything, or you have to say comma? Well, you know, there's a feature in the program called automatic punctuation, and theoretically it senses from your voice whether you need a comma or a period. I think Tom might use that. I, I'm, not not a yeah, I'm not comfortable with that, so I, I put in all that. Oh. So it's not like it's going to take away all your punctuation issues. You have to, you have to do the hard stuff. Um, do we have any Mac people in the audience? We do. Okay. There is a program, some more technology for the Mac called Mac Dictate. Um, so if you're interested in voice recognition on the Mac platform, let us know and we'll help you train on the Mac and not the PC. Um, for the, any of you who have mobile devices, like smartphones, tablets, okay, Android, Android, iPhone, 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 Android, iPhone wins. <laughs> um, tablets, no tablets. Okay. Uh, will it work on Kindle? No. no. But there are. There's voice recognition available. It's on the Android too get the Dragon app on your Android, and there's voice recognition built into the operating system for the iPhone and the iPad, starting with 4S, starting with 4S. You can talk to your, to your device. 
Also, there's a there's a program, Dragon Naturally Speaking, has an app for the iPhone and the Android platform. Okay. Do you want me to demo? No. no, we have a lot of technology. If we want, we'll revisit this. But the most important thing is for you to walk away knowing that there is this technology that makes it possible to talk and to have what you say appear as text. And that it's available on mobile platforms as well as on the computer. And the other thing I want to leave you with is that the technology is not perfect. This was pretty good recognition, right? But did you notice how I was talking? How would you characterize my speech patterns? Robot. What? Robot. A little robotic. I was trying to speak evenly, not too excited, um, and as carefully, and, and to articulate as carefully as I could, because it responds best to that. Okay. When I first started using the program, it wasn't as good. And I remember being in the lab alone one day, screaming at the screen. It's like, stop, correct that. And then I realized that it was not responding to my emotions. So it was really important. Okay, any questions before I go on? Let me just turn this on. have challenges with taking notes. It's really hard to sit in a class, be fully present, listen to everything that the professor is saying, take it in, feel the excitement of learning, and write down everything that's important. I think most of us have had some challenges in that area. So let me ask you, before I start giving you suggestions, how have you coped with that challenge? I went to a tutor. And what did the, how did the tutor help you get the information from the lecture? Well, this was in math. And, and math, I had, I tried three ways. One, I listened and just watched to understand the equation. Mm -hmm. the second way was, I'm just going to write down what she says so I can get the equation mm -hmm. process. And the third way was, you know, neither of these are really good. So I'm going to try listening. <coughs> following mm -hmm. and taking notes. Mm -hmm. That way failed too. So I ended up going to the tutor and I said, I don't know what the hell she's talking about. Can you work with me? Mm -hmm. So I ended up getting a C. I okay. thought I was going to fail. Well, you know, there are those moments, and you beautifully articulated yours, where, hopefully there are not a lot of them, where even if you're not trying to take notes, you just aren't understanding what the professor said. And you know that sometimes under those circumstances you cut your losses and drop the class. In your case, you hung in there, you got a tutor, and you got through. Um, in those circumstances where you are understanding what's going on, but you just can't get it all down, what have you done? I usually um, listen and write like, but I don't really know what I'm writing, I'm just copying it down, and then I'll just go home and reread it and learn it kind of myself. How, how do you fill in the gaps? Um, well, I'm listening during class, uh -huh. and then I'm just trying to write what he's saying, uh -huh. like a shorter version. Right, but which I is what night's nice notes are. Yeah, but I usually um, don't really know what I wrote down until I go home and read it. Okay. So then I go and understand what I what okay. he was saying when I read my notes. Well, first of all, congratulations for taking the time to go home and look at your class notes, because that's a really great study strategy. To look at your notes every day after class. Yes. Okay, so I have a similar situation. I, I was, I'm in a digital media class. I'm not taking it anymore. It just, it's, it just doesn't make sense to me. But I'm taking notes what he's saying in class. Mm -hmm. What we need to do when we're going to do a project. Mm -hmm. And then I'm asking questions, email. He says, I didn't say that. This is what I said. And I get the law. So the notes that I'm taking are not accurate. Okay, okay, this is a great combination of, of factors. All right, so clearly we need a way, all of us, to get the accurate information of what's going on in class. Yeah. Some people bring in a recorder. Yeah. An old-fashioned tape recorder, a digital recorder. What, I talked to someone, it's you, I think. Was it you yesterday? I brought a video of right, music and, class. Yeah, the professor didn't mind, and you videoed the entire class, every class. Okay, these are all 
solutions. Um, for those of us who are bringing in a recorder, yes, we will capture the whole audio portion of the class, right? We take notes as best as we can. We come home, we look at the notes, and somewhere we say, oh, I didn't get that part. I want to go to that part of the recording, right? Well, how do you get to that part of the recording? Oh, that's a great question. Fast forward, rewind. Ten minutes later, we find that part of the recording, right? Okay, it's doable, but it's a little... Tedious. Te perfect word. It's a little tedious. The smart pen take smart pen technology takes away that frustration and I'll show you how it works. Has anybody seen a demo of this? No, no. please show You have, okay. You guys, it's new to you, okay. I'm going to turn on the pen. And at one level, just think of this as a digital recorder shaped like a pen. Right? Instead of the usual shape. Now, because Hi, are you in Sharon's class? Yeah. Club at you. Um, just for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to use numbers instead of lecture notes because numbers are a little straightforward. So I'm going to need somebody to dictate numbers to me. Who will dictate them? Who do you want? I need numbers. Not quite yet. You dictate numbers to me? Yeah. All right, so I'm, the pen is on. When I tap record, you can hear a little beep. Okay, now here we have our lecture notes. You know they don't really look like lecture notes, but just go with me on this one, okay? Now I'm looking back at my lecture notes, as they do after every class, because I'm a really good student and I care. And <laughs> somewhere around here, I lost it. The professor was going too fast, I was thinking about what I was going to do about the weekend, whatever. I knew, I looked at my notes and I know stuff's missing. So I'm going to take my pen, and I want to start right about 2.05. So I'm going to tap right before what I'm going to tap right before that. Oh, great. See how it went right there? Did you all see that? Mm -hmm. I'll stop and show you again. One million. Okay. So let's say I want to hear one one thousand one. I want to go to that part of the lecture. So I'm going to tap right before it. It won't work upside down. So that's the idea. It, man. That saves that, a lot of headache. <laughs> <laughs> that there's a relationship between what you write and what is being said at that moment. Thanks to there's a little camera in the pen, there's special paper, and that package together makes this possible. And this is called called the Live Scribe Smart Pen. It comes in many per permutations, yes. I had like a leapfrog when I was younger, and it was yes. the same exact thing. You um, read a book, and then if you don't know how to say a word, you click on it with your finger, and it reads the word I out loud. I love leapfrog. You turn the page, and it's I bet different. you that's how the live scribe people got their inspiration. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. one of their kids had a leapfrog. <laughs> 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 yes, this is brilliant. Um, if you want to try it out, want more information, come by and talk to Tom or, or to me to my colleague Lisa. How much? Okay. The pens come in different, this is, this is sort of a wild west of this pen right now. Um, the, the new one, the newest one, the newest one syncs automatically with iOS technology, iPhone and iPad. And I think it's probably around 150-ish. Um, there are some of the old ones around, and we really like the old ones if you don't want to automatically sync what you write to some other technology. You mean that it's not USB compatible? Is that what you're saying is the old no, type? No, the, the I mean, I'm sorry, I didn't express myself.
yourself up. The two newest versions of this pen. While you're writing and recording, whatever you, the, the image of your page and the recording, the audio, automatically get transferred, automatically get synced to the to your iPhone or your iPad if you're using the iOS version, okay. or to your Evernote technology. Some of you may be familiar with the Evernote software. If you have Evernote note-taking software, if you buy that pen, the Sky Pen, it will automatically be synced to your Evernote note-taking software. And those are the ones that automatically sync to those different technologies. The older pen doesn't automatically do anything except do its job. Oh. And then if you want, you can copy the image of the page and the audio onto your computer. And that's USB. And that is... That There's is, a USB yes. relationship between yes. the old the technology and the computer. Yes. Well, that's far better. Yeah. Uh -huh. well, that's we what, liked it. That's we what we think. You know. But there, they seem not to have as many of those pens around. But anyway, if you decide you want to buy a pen, um, feel free to consult with one of us. Because we just want to make sure if you're going to spend the money that you get the pen that Sorry. meets your needs. And they come in different versions, okay? I want the USB because I don't have a smartphone. Right, so we need, to, we, we need to look. Probably Amazon would have them. Okay. So we just need to look them over. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Any questions about the pen? I didn't see Oh, if you want one of these pens, before you make a decision, like if you went on to the website or you went to Target or you went to Best Buy and you looked at the pens, you might see the one called the Sky, the one called, I forget what the new one's called, the iPad iPhone 1. I'm going to call it the iPad iPhone 1. Okay. And you might see the older version. Um, and you, we would just want to be sure that if you're going to spend the money that we get, you get the one that's right for you. So feel free to come and talk to us about it if you want. Can you find that on eBay? You might be able to find one of the older ones on eBay. Okay. Absolutely. Um, and, um, I had this um, Sure. Um, you said that we could also um, borrow it. We have, we have a waiting list. We have a few left that I haven't lent out for the semester yet. Um, and we do have a waiting list, but if, you're, if you do want to borrow one and you're not on the waiting list, let me know afterwards and we'll get you on the waiting list. We usually lend them for a semester, so you get a chance to see. Live scribes three. <coughs> three. Okay. Okay. Yeah, well, see, the whole movement, they started with Evernote uh, working in the cloud. So a lot of technology now is going to the cloud where there's some server someplace that's, that's keeping tabs of you where you can go anywhere and your information follows you. So they're trying to get us not stuck behind one computer, which is what most of the old software is like. So it is a move to the future. <coughs> and as you get playing with different devices, you'll see the advantages, but sometimes it's mm -hmm. nice right. to Especially if you don't have an iPhone. The good news is, all these new ones that are out are the $120, dollars and you can go on Amazon and buy these old pens for like $80. Okay. Yes. That's Price good. Wise. Um, okay. We're going to look at a different kind of technology now. Some of us learn better if we can hear what we need to read. Do any of you experience that or think you might be one of those people? I don't know. Okay. All right. So there's at least a few of you there. And we want you to know that there are an, like a, mm, uh, what's the word? an exponential increase in the number of programs that can read text to you. And I'm going to demonstrate at least one of those for you today. Just know that that technology is available. And if you think you're one of those learners where you would learn better if you can hear your text, come talk to us and we can brainstorm which program is best for you. There's mobile versions, there's computer versions. The, the whole area is just, as I said, exploding. So this particular program is called Kurzweil 3000. You probably saw this in one of Tom's demos. So this article is called Saving the California Condor. Right, might as well be one of your textbooks. I'm going to click on the read button. Do you hear anything? 
Can the speed be adjusted? Mm -hmm. Yes, we can hear it. Oh. Extinction for the California condor. Only Notice anything weird about this? Four remain alive so. once the well, species. So we can immediately address your question. On the reading toolbar, the speed is set at 85 words per minute. For most of us, that's going to be too slow. So let's get this adjusted up to at least 120. It looked like extinction for the California condor. Only 24 remained alive. Was this species doomed? Almost. But this spring an egg hatched and evolved for the first time in about 20 years. The chick and its parents bring new hope for the survival of the species. Okay, any reactions to this? Huh? I feel like it's helpful. But still, I mean, obviously it's not a perfect role, but I think there's like an actual person saying it would be easier to okay. it's too robotic. Okay. Of. Well, a couple things. First, you do get your, the, most Texas speech programs do have a choice of voices. This happens to be one of the better voices, but let's see if we can, let's see. Yeah, let's very robotic, try. yeah. There's let's real see if Paul's robotic working on this voices. One. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> well, you know what? <laughs> You're right. In the world of, yeah. Almost. But this spring, an egg hatched in the wild for the first time in about 20 years. Do you like the it better? And its parents bring the new for the species. Now, most, most, most of us can get used to this. For those of you who, in any case, prefer a human voice, we do have another option from a company called Burning Ally. Did any of you in your past? Listen to books from recordings for the blind and dyslexic. Any of you have that experience? They used to do tapes. But now, of course, everything's going to digital. Everything's going to the cloud. Any book we get from Learning Ally has been recorded by a human being. And Recording Ally has apps for Android and iOS. So just to give you an example, You have your book on your phone. Just wanting me to identify myself. This is Sharon's class. It's a call. But if you, it's also open lab, so you can use. Is that better? Yeah, that's not like somebody's right in front of me. She is. Well, is that what I need to drop something If you want to use the lab, you just need to go over there for the question and ask the time. Well, that's, okay. a, that's a good one, isn't it? Right. What was that one called? This company is called Learning Ally. And you have two ways to access their stuff. You can join as an individual. Sometimes they have grants, sometimes they don't. It's not hugely expensive. You need verification of a print disability. And that could be because you have um, a physical disability, so a visual disability, or you have a learning disability. So because it's not open to the general public, that's why I have to have verification of your disability. So you can do it as an individual. You have access to their entire library. If you do it through our institutional license, we verify your disability, and we download the books that they have for your class, and then you access them on your whatever device you're going to access them. So if this is something you're thinking you need like right now, we should try to implement this. Who's your, is, is Sharon your learning disability specialist? She's, so as soon as you can get a hold of Sharon, tell her that, that this is interesting to you and you'd like to see what we can get from Learning Ally right now. And you have an iPhone. Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. And then what was that one called? This one? Yeah. This is Kurzweil 3000. And this is one of many computer-based programs. Now, you know the world is, the sands are shifting under our feet as we speak. So that Kurzweil has an app for the, for the tablet, for the, for the iPad. So, you know, all these companies are trying to keep up with the mobile market. Things that have traditionally been just on a computer are now going to the cloud, are now going mobile. So it's a new world. 
the mo again, the most important thing is to, the, the, t the takeaway I have from you guys is that you think about what will help you learn best. Will it help me if I could talk to the computer? Will it help me if I could hear my print resources? Will that help me? And then we can figure out the details. So think about the big picture. But if I have a textbook, like I have mm -hmm. in my, mm -hmm. my backpack, yes. there's no way that that could be oh, there so is. spoken to me. Here's how, the, here's how the process works. When you, in collaboration with your learning disability specialist, your disabled student services counselor, determine that you need to hear your, and I'll say instructional resources, because it isn't just about textbooks. It can be tests. It can be the material your teachers put on your companion. It can be many things. Right? So if you decide you need to hear this stuff, then she, or whoever it is, they fill out a form and you guys come to Tom and to me. Then together we collaborate as to what works best for you, depending on what devices you own, where you study, what kind of books you want, etc. Right? We have many sources we can go to for digital books, for books that are already available to be played on the computer. You can hear them. If your book is nowhere to be found in a digital format, we take your book, we break it open, we put it through a high speed scanner, and we create the digital content. Awesome. Great. And then we give you back your book rebound with a plastic spiral binding. The only downside for you is you can't sell it back. But so anything can be created to be digital. Sell it back to who? The bookstore. Well, that's not a problem. Sell somewhere else. Right. There you go. I like your attitude. Is that a your question? There's yeah. nothing so we can't do out. in that in that line. Nothing. Okay. And the most important thing to keep in mind is, if you need a specific accommodation, then it's our job in collaboration with you and the professor to figure out how to make it happen. So we want to want to think optimistically. We want to make things happen. Well, this is great. You can do this at home, and when you're in class, you got that little pen. You're not going to miss anything. There are, exactly. And that's that's also the point of this, too, is we don't want you missing out on any of your instructional resources. Programs like Kurzweil 3000 were designed not just so you could listen to your text. That's why it costs $500. It can do more than that. And let me show you some of the things it can do. You know, as we read, we always come upon a word that we don't know the meaning of, right? So in this case, the dictionary is built in. I double click on condor. I'm going to go to the dictionary. Here's the definition of condor. I can listen to it if I want. Because I've done this demonstration more than once, I know what part of the definition I want. So I'm going to take the definition. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to close the dictionary. And I'm going to come back into my digital text. I don't know about you guys, but I can look up a word in my reading, understand it, come back to my reading, and five minutes later forget what it means. Oh, yeah. This is disturbing. So here, now what are our choices? I can't tell you how many books I've just written the, the meaning in the book, right? Because that works. Um, digitally, here's what we do. Create a sticky note. I'll put it right over here. I'm going to paste in the text. Actually, let me move. We paste in that text, and here's the meaning of condor. Oops. Oops. A little bit. So that if we ever forget what a condor means, we've got it right here. Okay. And this will work across five dollars. Yes, and yeah. we have um, sixty licenses here at Santa Monica College, so we can lend you licenses that you can use at home. In addition to which, we have another program <coughs> called Reader My Gold, for which we have a site license for the entire campus. Yes. And it does similar things. So we always make sure for those of you that need to listen to printed material, that you have a way to access it at home. Because we know that you don't do all of your studying on campus. So, so there's two of these programs that do the same thing. Similar. They have a slightly different approach, which hopefully we'll get to. Okay. Um, another thing that this program can do is give you the opportunity to highlight text. So 
what we're going to do is we're going to together listen to and read this chapter about how the condors became endangered, and then we're going to answer that question. So just listen. How did condors become endangered? Human development in the areas the big birds flew presented many hazards. Deadly collisions with power lines took many birds' lives. Habitat destruction meant the loss of nesting and hunting territory. Pesticide poisoning led to unhealthy eggs and a drop in hatchlings. Okay. Scientists needed to move quickly to save the Excellent. big birds. Okay. Now, any of you who have taken Anita's textbook strategies class, I know, know that one way to act, interact with your textbooks is to ask questions. And the question serves as a way to summarize what you're reading about. In this case, the question was handed to us in a silver plate. How did condors become endangered? That's what this paragraph's all about, right? So I'm going to take highlight it, highlight your color. I'm going to highlight this. Then we take another color, and we are going to answer the question: How did condors become endangered? I ask you, how? What got in their way? Except it's Specifics. Human development in the areas. Human, but what about the human specifically? What? Pesticide poisoning. Pesticide poisoning. That certainly didn't help them. What else? Deadly collisions. Deadly collisions with power lines. And one more thing. Habitat destruction. Yes. Okay. Well done. All right. Now. We're already ahead of the game because we've identified the point of the paragraph and we've highlighted the details, right? This is good. This is already one step ahead of just looking at the words because you know, you've all been there, you spent an hour, two hours, three hours reading your textbooks, right? The time is up, the evening is gone, and what do you remember? Yeah, that's a real problem. Does this not happen? Yeah. We don't want any of us to waste our time like that. So we have to have strategies for interacting with our textbooks so that we pull out the important information and have it available for studying. We don't want to have to read our textbooks more than once. It's just not efficient. Mm -hmm. If you have a digital textbook like this, here's what you can do. We've highlighted what's important, the main idea, the details. We also have a definition up at the top, right? I'm going to go to the file menu and choose Extract, Extract Notes and Highlights. I'm going to say OK. And a new document opened up. A new document opened up that has all of that information. The definition, the question highlighted, and the answer to the question were extracted. They were taken out of the context of the textbook and put into a document. And you don't have to outline There it is. Well, it depends on how carefully you take your notes. But yeah, it gets, it's definitely moves you ahead in the process. And this document you can work with in Kurzweil. You can pull it into Microsoft Word, wherever you're comfortable working. And this becomes a kind of study guide. Now, you're in Anita's class, we're doing it differently. I don't want this to confuse you. This is just a different way to do it. Um, but the point is that there are ways to interact with your textbooks so that you can get out the important information and create a study guide. So you're not wasting your time and you're better prepared for your classes and, of course, for the exams. This is great. Okay, so far? Yeah. Right. Now, I'm going to take a slight turn here, and we're looking at a program called Inspiration. Anybody familiar with This is good. Do you want to tell us about it? Um, I don't know if I can articulate you all. Just tell me what you know. Um, it gives you, like for somebody like me, mm -hmm. that's visual, mm -hmm. it's it able to give you a visual outline of, like, the outline that you had before, or you studied that yes. visually. It's like a visual outline. Exactly. And it has pictures. And you can and you can add pictures. Um, 
this program can be used, I think, in two different ways. It can be used to brainstorm. You know, how many times do our professors say, I want you to write a paper on this topic? And you walk out of the class and you go, I have nothing to say. And then you sort of file the assignment away somewhere. And the night before it's due, you take it out. And you do the best you can because you don't want to get an F, right? But clearly what you did the night before is not your best effort. It's just something. So in an effort to release yourself from that pattern, which is not in your best interest, you want another way to approach your writing. You want a way where you can you know, do a task analysis, do it step by step, and well in advance of when it's due, so you can really give it your best shot. And for people who have trouble getting started, for people who have trouble organizing their writing, organizing their writing, this can be a gift from heaven. It can also be used for taking notes, which is something we're doing, taking notes from a textbook, taking notes from a lecture, which is something we're doing in Anita's class. All right, so how does this work? You can see main idea, right, in the middle, right? Now we're going to take something that we can all relate to, because we're going to build one of these in about five minutes. Can you all relate to, let's say, the Christmas holidays and everything that needs to be done? There's a lot to be done for Christmas holidays. I mean, every family's different, but... Thanksgiving. Okay, let's do Thanksgiving. Fair enough. All right, so our main idea is going to be Thanksgiving. Now, that's pretty straightforward. Obviously, if you were, let's say, in an English class, the main idea could be something like, compare and contrast Jane Austen's treatment of the single woman with the way it was done in James Joyce, Ulysses, whatever. So, I mean, these ideas get more sophisticated and more complicated. This is straightforward, but that's okay because we're just going to see how it works. All right, here's what we can do in the next five minutes. I want you to just to, to say anything that comes to your mind related to Thanksgiving. But I'm not going to worry about it because we're just. Ten. What? Ten. Ten. Cranberry. Cranberry. Pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie. Mashed potato pie. Mashed potato pie. Did I get mashed potatoes? Mm -hmm. Really? No. <laughs> Eggnog. Mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. Eggnog. Mm -hmm. What? Family. Family. Friends. Wine. Wine. A couple more. Double eggs. What? Double eggs. Double eggs, I think, are making a comeback. Yes. Decorations. Decorations. Okay, oh, you guys couldn't have done it better. To, to help me make my point. Okay. All right, so here we have Thanksgiving, which is our center. I'm going to move it up with you. As you look at what you generated, all right, which concepts go together? The food. The food, okay. So let's put all the food together. We got ham, we got mashed potatoes. Now, we got pumpkin pie. What's the relationship between wine and eggnog? Drinks. Drinks. Okay, drinks. So I'm going to make, we need a new category because we don't have a drink category. So that's what happens as you brainstorm an inspiration. You realize these things go together, but they don't have a label. We need to put in the label. So we're going to put in drinks, okay? So we've got these associated. Now, pumpkin pie. Let's put them dessert. Let's get a dessert category going. Okay. We've got dessert. Now, now what about <clears throat> friends and family? Guests. Guests. Can you do it like a different color? Yes, I'm so glad you asked. Yes. Because that will help you organize and help you remember. Yes, okay, now, I think we've got enough to go here. Now, let's take a look. I'm going to start with, here's Thanksgiving, right? I'm going to start with drinks. I'm going to put drinks, ah, uh, no, actually no, we're going to start with food. Uh, meal, let's see meal. Thanksgiving meal. Okay, that's our big category, is the meal, okay? And under meal, we have drinks, yes? 
In drinks so far, we've identified eggnog, although it's a little Christmassy, but I'll go with you on this one. All right? You good? Now, another, I'm going to leave these foods over here just for now because we don't have a lot of time. Another big category is guests, which includes family and friends. Hopefully, they're not too different. Okay, now, we have done some organization, right? We brainstormed and then we looked at the relationships among the ideas. We added categories as we needed. Now, next part, really important. I'm going to click on Thanksgiving. I'm going to find a little, just a little diamond here, and I'm going to draw a link to meal. Then I'm going to draw a link to drinks, and from drinks, a link to wine, and a link to eggnog. You with me? I'm creating links based on the relationships that we agreed on. Thanks. Back to Thanksgiving, a link to guests, from guests, a link to family, from guests, a link to friends. See how this is building, this idea map? Now, for those of us who hear the word outline and want to run in the other direction, mm -hmm. but we're somewhat comfortable or very comfortable in this environment, as soon as you start creating these links, you may have to come up a closer to see this. When I click on outline, if you can't see it, just come up for a sec. I want you to see that it's building an outline. That meal is Roman numeral one, drinks is A, eggnog and wine are one and two, Roman numeral two is guests, A and B are family and friends. So that whole idea of creating that linear outline, Roman numerals A, B, C, one, two, three, not so bad anymore because you were able to have the freedom of creating in this, in this visual environment. And as long as these links establish the relationships correctly, your outline, your linear outline, your up and down scary linear outline gets created automatically. Now, somebody asked about colors. Is that you? Okay. There is almost an infinite amount of things you can do with these diagrams to make them come alive so that you can organize better and remember more. Color is one of them. You can take a whole category like this and say, okay, I want to fill this with it's Thanksgiving with orange. I want to fill this with orange, right? Mm -hmm. You can take, okay, this whole category, the food category, the food category, and let's make it We'll call you one. Brown, but not too brown because you have to be able to see it. Okay? So we're already building with color. Now, pictures. There's a whole picture library inside of here. I'm going to click on Thanksgiving. I'm going to come over to the basics. And is there a. I'm looking for holidays. Holidays. Fun holidays. Sorry. Fun holidays. And you know they're really small. One of these must look like Thanksgiving. Ah, let's do it. Okay. Now we have a picture. What picture? What? Oh. Picture where? There we go. So now instead of that sort of boring symbol, we have a cornucopia to represent Thanksgiving. The picture library is fine, but they're not the greatest pictures in the world. What you can also do is you can go on the internet. Could you draw your pictures? You can. It has to be a digital image. So if let's say you use the paint program to create an image. And you say there's a JPEG or some sort of image format. Sure. You absolutely can draw your own. In this case, let's go to Google and let's do pumpkin pie. And let's let's do an image search. Really 
he's so hungry. Okay, let's just we need to pick one, so we'll just anybody care? So let's pick one of these. Let's copy this. Let's go back to inspiration. Now let's go to pumpkin pie and paste. So now it looks like a pumpkin pie. Now imagine we weren't just doing Thanksgiving. Imagine, let's say you were doing the um, the architectural elements of the Gothic church in France, right? So you've got all of these pieces of the church, right? Some of which you've never heard of, some of which you have heard of. But imagine you go on the internet, you find a visual representation of each of those pieces, right? You attach it to one of these symbols. What happens as you start creating this diagram and looking for images, defining words? What happens to your learning as you're doing this? It's interactive. It's interactive and you remember? Exactly. Like, so you don't remember the word, you could probably remember the picture. Yes, exactly right. And that's part of getting to know who you are. You know, I think for you, you know the color makes a difference. And I, I, I remember so many moments in my past sitting, taking an exam and thinking, okay, I know these answers came from the part that I highlighted in pink. You think about that. You know, because color really can make a difference. Um, another thing you could do with this is, um, now, remember this is about Thanksgiving, not your academic work, but I'm going to click on friends. And then I'm going to click on note. Okay, give me the name of some of your friends. Just give me names. Paul. Paul. <coughs> what? Bob. Bob. Billy. 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 Mm -hmm. All right. Now, I'm going to close the note. Now, imagine this in a, in a study context, like a vocabulary word. You look at this word. You say. Okay, who are the friends? Who are the friends? Paul, Bob, Tom. And you open up your note. You say, Paul, Bob. Oh, I got Billy wrong. Right? Mm -hmm. But this is another way that you can use this software by creating notes and then exposing the notes to test yourself. So it's got a lot of potential, as you can see, both for creating ideas as well as organizing them and studying. Okay. Any questions about this? Okay. I'm going to close this. I'm going to close Thanksgiving now. You ready? you can download a free 30-day trial from inspiration.com. And then if you decide that you want to buy it, cheapest would be Journey Ed. There are companies like journeyed.com that discount software to students and faculty. $50. Wow. Really good price. But if you want to try it out, go to inspiration.com and download it. Okay, now. I'm opening up a program called Read and Write. Remember Kurzweil that we looked at a few minutes ago? It read text aloud, it had a built in dictionary, you could highlight a lot of tools to enrich the reading writing experience. Read and Write Gold is similar. But instead of working in its own program, you get a toolbar that's on top of Microsoft Word or whatever industry standard program. And it works mostly with the Microsoft products. So here we are in Microsoft Word. We can do this, we can use this program to listen to our textbooks. We can also use this program to listen to what we've written. It's really 
of reading to them. So, for example, today is Wednesday. Welcome to the Santa Monica College High Tech Training Center. I am glad you are here today to see how technology might make a difference in your life. She's I am not bad. voice recognition technology. Okay. You get the idea? Okay, so this is this program we actually have a site license for the entire campus. So seriously, if you have friends who you think would benefit from this, as well as you, tell your professors about it. This is available for our whole campus community this year. And it can do a lot more, we just have to stop, so I can't yeah, show you anymore. Important. But if you want a more in-depth look at this, just let us know. Thank you so much for coming. Oh, this was great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You know, Sharon, probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Who's absent? I think Sharon said you were nine. So. The correct answer is not me.